welcome you to this adventurous club class. We are on lesson five. This is New Life SDA Church. Feel welcome and enjoy our lesson. This is Builders class. My name is Teacher Josh. My name is Carl Malawa from Builders class. And my name is Anne Malawa. Thank you. I will welcome Carl to give us a word of prayer before we start. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. As we start this lesson, protect us, be with us. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Can please give us the adventurous pledge? Because Jesus loves me, I will always do my best. Thank you. Adventurous love? Jesus can help me to be obedient, be pure, be true. Be kind, be respectful, be attentive, be helpful, be cheerful, be thoughtful, be reverent. Excellent. And the adventurous song? We are adventurous. At home at school I play. We are adventurous. We are learning every day to be honest, kind and true, to be like Jesus through and through. We are adventurous. Well done, Carl. Thank you. Now Carl is going to read, narrate for us a parable in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 14 to 13. It's a parable talking about the parable of talent. Carl, kindly narrate for us what happened between the master and his servants. Once there was a master who wanted to go on a journey, he had three servants. He wanted to give the servants talents according to their ability. One ga he gave five talents and another one two talents and another one one. The one who had given was given one talent went and dig a hole in the earth and buried his master's money. The one who had two, two talents went and earned another two talents. The one who had five talents went and earned another five talents. When the master came back, he wanted to settle his amounts with his servants. He, he called his servants, the one who had five talents started, and then the master said, good and faithful servant, come and share my happiness. The one who had two talents said, good and faithful servant, you come and share my happiness with me. The one who had one talent went and told his master, You reap where you did so, you, la you wicked and lazy servant. Okay, Carl, that's good. The, we find that among the three servants, there was this, the third one who was lazy. He didn't utilize his talents well. Can you, can you tell us how this parable is related to our pledge? As an adventurer, I will use my ability and talent to serve God and others. Thank you, Carl. We find that God gives us different talents and opportunities. And if we look at the adventurer's pledge that says, Because Jesus loves me, I will always do my best. Yes, we are supposed to do our best using our talents and different abilities that God gives us. From this parable, we have different lessons that we can draw for our teachers, viewers and fellow adventurers. One, we find that we are not created with equal skills, opportunities and abilities. And that's why the three servants could not, all of them could not give back. One gave two talents equally to what you had been given. The other one gave five equally to what he had given. But the third one was lazy. The opportunity was given, but he didn't have the skills to multiply whatever he was given. The second lesson that we can draw from that. Uh, we shall all be held accountable. When the master was living, he uh, issued talents according to people's ability. But when he came back, each and every servant was held accountable. Thank you. Now, we also find that success only occurs when we take action. Remember, the third servant never took any action. So he slept on the ability and the opportunity that he was given. And the third and the most one is that God always gives us every 
thing we need to do, what he has called us to do. I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. That is what we get from Philippians 4 verse 13. The master expected servants to do more than passively of what had been entrusted to them. God expects us to generate returns by using our skills and ability towards productive end. Now, fellow viewers, adventurers and parents at home, from wherever you are viewing us from, let's take lessons and take note of the lessons that we learn from this particular parable. We are moving to the next step. Teacher Josh, before we move to the next step, the parable came from Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 30. We want to bring to you another class that talks about the pioneers, the pioneers who pioneered our faith in the Adventist faith. For one, this is to help us trace and appreciate those who championed, prepared the way, and developed structures for our faith. So Carl, could you kindly name for us a few of the pioneers that you've come across? Helen White and James White. Helen White and James White. Teacher Anne, do you have any other pioneer you know of? There is Andrew. We are going to focus on two, Helen White and James White. We look and find out that Helen White was born in the 1827 and she died in 1915. Ellen pioneered and helped our faith in a number of ways. One, she was in instrumental in formation of our Seventh-day Adventist church. Secondly, she was the first leading vegetarian in the American history. Remember that our faith talks about the healthy eating and healthy Food. The other thing she did, she did a number of books that are helping us strengthen our faith and one of the books is Steps to Christ, the other one is The Desire of Ages, just to mention a few, and the last one is The Great Controversy. All these books have got great impact on our faith. Other than that, she had high regards to the Bible. Other than having high regards to the Bible, Ellen White was one of the pioneers who had visions and dreams. and dreams about our faith. She also pioneered the reforms in health. We are looking at the second pioneer and our interest falls on James White. James White was the husband to Ellen G. White and James White lived in the year 1821 to 1881. James White was also known as an elder, husband to Ellen White, as I've said, and he was also co-founder of our faith. He started the first Sabbatarian Adventism. He also pioneered Adventist educational structure. Remember, for those of, our, of us who have traveled far and wide, if you go to the United States, to be very specific, Michigan State, there is one of the institutions that was named or that James White pioneered. And the institution is called Battle Greek College that is in Michigan in the United States. Remember, this award of early Adventists is designed to create children a growing awareness of their Adventist heritage, helping them to feel good about being Adventist and encouraging them to value the contribution of our pioneer. After looking at the pioneers, now we move to the next stage. I'll invite Teacher Anne to get, take us through this other stage. Teacher Anne, kindly tell us what a granola is and its importance. Uh, thank you, Teacher Joas. Granola 
it's a mixture of it's a cereal for breakfast mostly used in breakfast it can uh, contain like oats raisins almonds chia seeds mostly taken during breakfast why breakfast because during breakfast that is the time the stomach is in a condition whereby it can absorb a lot of food stuff so it, it is recommended that you take a very healthy breakfast and the next question that somebody would ask why granola why is it associated with our pioneers the pioneers championed for healthy living because not forgetting that our bodies are the temples of the holy spirit and uh, if you take healthy uh, we are advised that you are able to behave well in terms of how you do your things your, your brain functions well if you take a well balanced breakfast in this case granola and you are also supposed to function well whatever you do wherever you go you are able to function very well that is how granola relates to our pioneers and uh, maybe somebody can ask how does that granola, granola look like this is an example of what granola looks like it's a mixture of it's a cereal for breakfast that contains mixture of some cereals oats almonds raisins and chia seeds thank you my viewer thank you adventurer teacher josh thank you for taking us through that stage and now it is my pleasure to invite carl to give us the memory verse a memory verse comes from the book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 12 and it says this calls for endurance on the part of God's people those who obey his commandments and are faithful to Jesus thank you Carl it is true that those who are called saints or Christians and that is you and me boys and girls are called upon to keep God's commandment. Remember the Ten Commandments that God gave us in the beginning. Those Ten Commandments, we are supposed to follow them and use them to mirror our faith in our works in Christianity. Now, fellow viewers and boys and girls, we now move to the next stage where we are going to do our activity book in the activity workbook that is on page 18. 18. It is talking about our family. Remember the parable that we just talked about. We were supposed to relate it on how it has impacted on our family and relate it on how we can use it to foster our relationship with Christ. Now, Carl, you will share with us, based on what you did on the activity work, how your family changed, what you felt, and how you did it. What type of a family is your family, Carl? Foster care blended and blended, blended family is a a change that happened in my family was we hosted one of the needy family during the pandemic. What did you feel? I felt God's presence because we had a bigger family. Understanding fear of the Lord's wisdom and God's providence. Now, you are supposed to circle the Bible family that look like uh, your family. Which family did you circle? Moses family. Why did you choose Moses family? How does it resemble your family? We led the needy family to a safer ground just like Moses led the Israelites from Egypt to the God, God the land God had promised. Well done Carl. We are now getting to the last stage where we are getting to the award. Our word for lesson six is about building blocks. Remember, the purpose of this award is to help us compare the similarities that are between building a structure and building good character. And in this aspect, we borrow from what servants of God did in the ancient time. We have, we can get a character like Noah in Genesis 11, uh, 6 verse up to seven, the Tower of Babel, Babel in Genesis 11. We can also talk about Abraham's tent that we get in Genesis 12, one to eight. But of our interest is about Noah's ark. Remember, it took Noah 120 years 
to build an ark. That was a command from God. It took him 120 years to build an ark. And it only, he only stayed in that ark for more than one year. Remember, we are borrowing from this so that we see what were the building blocks, the materials, the equipment, the skills that Noah used to build the ark that God had commanded him to do. In this regard, I'll take the opportunity to invite a very special guest to help us know what we need when doing a construction, whereby we are going to learn the similarities between building a structure and building our characters. We are now introducing to you our guest, who is an engineer by profession, and he's going to take us through a number of aspects that entails building. He will show us the kind of tools that he, uh, he uses and he will demonstrate to us how they are used. Also, he will tell us the kind of things that he builds or participates in building. And the other aspect will be the safety rules that are needed when carrying out construction. And the last aspect will be the values that are needed to carry out such an act. My guest, kindly introduce yourself and take us through. I am Jacob, a construction engineer. I'll start by thanking my hosts for being, for making me to be present here today, to share with you and to mentor uh, the Adventist group on the tools used, the structures that we construct out there, our the core values and the safety rules on the construction site. To start with, I'll start by just showing a few tools that I have with. First, I'll start with uh, this tool is a uh, mason trowel. This is used in uh, brickwork or stonework. It's also used for leveling and smoothing the concrete surfaces. The second tool here is a uh, wood float. This is a wood float. This is used for preparing surfaces for floating. Next tool is a uh, a trowel, a steel trowel. This one is used for floating to achieve a smooth surface. The next tool here is a, these are appliers. This is just for tying up wires. This is a large trowel. This is used for plastering. Another thing here is uh, this anango trowel used for the corner, smoothening the corners of the plaster. Another thing is a tape measure. Tape measure is used to measure the length of the wall, where it begins and where it ends. It's also meant to measure the size of the opening in a structure. Another thing here, this is um, a plumbing tool. This is a, a pipe lens. This is used for tightening or loosening the pipe fittings. Another here, this is uh, another tool here. This is a plumb bob. A plumb bob is used to establish the plumb. The plumb, whether the something is, a plumb means exactly vertical. This is used to check the verticalness of the wall or the verticalness of the fittings during the fittings. Another tool here is a hacksaw. This hacksaw is used to cut metal. Another tool here is a mason, mason square. A mason square is placed at the edge of the wall to ensure that the stone was set perpendicular. Another tool here with me is a drill. This is a metric drill. This drill is used to make holes on the wall, mostly used uh, during fitting, fitting the soap ditch, towel holders, 
and other fittings that are supposed to be fed on the walls. Another tool here is a screwdriver. This is used for driving in the screws in the wall or removing the screws from the wall or the wood. I think uh, those are the few tools that I have. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there is another tool here. An electrical tool. This is an electrical tool used during uh, wiring or when you're doing wiring on a building. This is used to check the continuity of the, of the current. It can also be used to test the flow of current. It also used to test the resistance of the wire in a current. Basically, it's known as a multimeter. Thank you very much. Thank you, engineer, for taking us through the various tools that we can use during construction work. But remember, fellow viewers, adventurers, and parents, without our eminent tool, the Bible, all this cannot be achieved. So we add into this the Bible as our tool, whereby we get all the inspiration for doing and developing our character. I will now ask the engineer, what kind of structures do you build? Thank you very much. I and other group there, the group of the professionals, we do building structures, we do commercial, residential building, we also do go, do go downs, the parking, we also do the gardening, and also do the swimming pool, and uh, others who are specified to other services like plumbing works, others are professional in electrical works, and uh, others are specified maybe in uh, fitting the current the, 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 the current uh, features or the materials that has been used who are in a current trade in the market. Thank you for that. Maybe teacher Ann or Carl, do you have a question to the engineer? Yes. What is the ma materials that you used to build? Yes. The material uh, they vary in large numbers. So we, if you are using, if you are building a commercial building, we may use blocks, building blocks. You have a, a copy Sorry. of the same. You have a building blocks. You have a cement. Okay. You have a cement. You have building blocks. You have the concrete. You have timber. You have sand. And there are others like sheets. There is glass paint. There are all metals. All these materials we use to achieve the client's requirements. And another um, question, engineer. Okay. What are the safety measures that you take when you are under the construction site? Uh, the safety measures in uh, construction site, specifically to be mentioned my site, you have to, before you enter into a site, you must make sure you have your PPEs, the personal protective equipment. That is, you must have a helmet, like I must have a photo here with me, you should be equipped like this. You must have a, a, a helmet. You should have an overlaw for dust. You should have the reflector, so a person you can be seen easily. You should have a, a gloves on you, and you should have a safety boots on you. Another thing, another safety measure that you're supposed to do, you should keep your, the site tidy. The site should always be clean to avoid the slip and fall accident. Mm -hmm. another, another safety measures is you should not do any work without you are given all the induction inside. Here induction, I mean all the legal construction requirements. Another thing, you should use the collect tools for the collect work. You can, if it is a drill like this one, you cannot use it to harm a nail. It's for making the, the hose. If you use it otherwise, you will injure yourself or you damage the tool. You should not, not damage any tools. And if a tool is damaged, you should report to your immediate supervisor. Another, another safety measures that we use on our site, you should, uh, if you have any doubt, just ask. Because to us, it can take just a few minutes to collect. 
But if you don't collect, if you don't ask for collection, make a mistake to make it right, it will take a lot, a long time to mm. collect to make things right. Yeah. Those are the few the safety measures that we inside. Another question, engineer. Okay. What do you need to be a good builder? What you need to be a good builder? One thing you have to train. You have to go to school. You'll be trained to be a professional. Another thing, you must be honest and integrity. Mm. This is you have to be you have to be truthful mm. to yourself first and to your clients. Mm. When if you say you have to do something, you are supposed to do exactly what you said. Another thing you are supposed to be a good builder, you should be uh, accountable, responsible. Any builder or in any other profession, you are supposed to be responsible on, on your side. Here when I say responsible, you are supposed to make sure that your materials are of good standard, they are of sound standard. You have to go and test them, make sure they are of the specification. You make sure that they meet the, the, all those specifications so that you can use them in your construction site. Another thing you can talk about is um, professionalism, that you have to go to school. Another thing you have to safety and quality. You have to maintain quality in your construction site, quality so as you can exceed the client expectation with exceptional performance. Thank you, engineer, for taking us through all that aspect about construction. Remember that the purpose of this award is to help us borrow the similarities that are in between the construction work and to build our characters as Christians. And fellow viewers and boys and girls, Christ wants us to build our character just the same way the engineer has demonstrated to us on how he can bring up a building right from the foundation and there's one thing that I'm sure of, that the foundation of a building is the most important, important aspects of the construction. Just the same way that our foundation at this tender age of bringing these children on Christ aspect is the best to build them for future aspects in their life. Otherwise, Teacher Anne, do you have anything to add on that? No, I think uh, Engineer Jacob was very clear on everything and demonstration and illustration. And I wish to thank you so much for coming and participating in our lesson. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, viewers and boys and girls. We now come to the end of our lesson. And remember, the aspect of this award again, God wants you to live in the house he is doing or rather building for you in heaven. How I wish that all of us would walk the same path so that we reach that building and that heavenly kingdom that Christ is building for us. This brings us to the summary of submission that all the parents are supposed to help their children do and then submit to their various teachers. One of the mandatory aspect is a photo of accomplished task from the workbook just like what Calda had shown us and then they record a video of the adventurer reciting the memory verse that comes from Revelation 14 verse 12 and then any of the, of the following two aspects a photo of a video of a constructed building just like what we had shown you on the screen as a, an ongoing a building you can use clays you can use cartons or any other invention that you feel that you can use to demonstrate a construction that is going on and then the aspect of singing there's the aspect of singing that you should choose one of the songs that have been provided in the curriculum then record a video of a song and the last one is a video or a photo of a granola has been explained by teacher Anne. Otherwise, we expect to submit all this lesson by the end of this month, and that is on 25th of July, 2020. Otherwise, I now call upon one of us to lead us in a word of prayer before we end this lesson. Carl, can you pray? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for this le lesson that you have given on to us. As we go home, be protect us and be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you and see you. Bye. Bye.